What is good, YouTube? A Squad 72. And today we're talking about episodes three and four of Black Clover, titled To the Royal City and the Magic Knight's Entrance Exam. Now, the reason why I combine these two episodes is because in episode three, it really wasn't much of anything that happened. And it was pretty much as the title tells you, on the road, they were just headed towards the Royal City. And so there was a tidbit of information that was interesting, but glossed over. It was it was also really intertwined with the conversation between the priest of the church that Austin, you know, grew up in and that the wizard that was handing out the grimoires in the previous episode. So it starts out with the father asking, you know, he understands that, you know, is taking the interest exam for the for the world knights, but why are they encouraging Asa to take it as well? And so the wizard just replies, you know, he insists on taking it. So what do you expect me to do? And so this happens about three or four times that the father still stating he understands why he knows taking the magic knights exam, but I encourage Aston. And so this exchange goes back and forth. And then what happens is that the wizard, he still remembers that Asta has a five clover grimoire and he has his suspicions about it. And so he's he's talking to himself and is kind of under his breath. And the father's asking, you know, what's he talking about? And he replies that it, it's it's nothing. And they just skip right over it. And so like that was pretty much the only bit of important information is that somebody knows what's going on it's like the very select few know what's going on with Asa's grimoire but nobody's really willing to talk about it and so i mean i realize this is only like three episodes in but you know they're trying to keep this mystique and they're trying to build up this 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 whole five clover grimoire thing and so that's kind of to be expected but other than that that very small scene there really wasn't anything of importance as they were on their way to bro city and so once they make it, that's where the episode actually ends. They they make it to the Royal City and it just cuts off. And this is where episode four picks up at. Is that once they made it to the city, they're looking around in these these vendors and different things like that. Asta buys this some kind of snake on a steak. And uh he he's going to town on that. But then they finally make their way to the entrance exam where they stand in line and they give their name, where they're from, and they get that number before the entrance exam. And so, you know, gets there and he gives him his number and he notices that he has the four clover four yeah, four leaf clover legendary grimoire. And so Asta gets up there and he puts his grimoire so close to the guy's face. He's just like, get this out of my face. Get this kid away from me. The number's 165. Get out of my face. And they're sitting around. They're standing around waiting for uh, the exam to take place. And it's all of these anti-birds. Now, anti-birds are... I guess used to indicate who has low mana or no mana. And so everybody who's there, they have either one or two around them. And then Asa shows up with a flock of anti-birds just hovering around him. And then somebody notices Juno has no anti-birds around him because apparently since he's chosen by the four leaf grimoire, he has extremely high magic, magic power. And so there are no birds around him. So Asa's running around trying to get these anti-birds out of his face. And he bumps into Yami, the captain of the Black Bulls, uh, which they also call the God of Destruction. And so he bumps into him and he's being followed by his two subordinates. And uh, him and Asta get into it. Yami and Asta actually get into it. And so right before it is the resolution to this problem, the fireworks go off and Yami returns to his place with the other Royal, Royal Knight captains. The captain of the the Hall to Dawn or I, you know what, I'm terrible with names, but the, uh, the call to Don captain, he shows up and he gives everybody brooms in which now this part coming up, I understand that they show, they needed to show the distance between their ability far as with, you know, and Aster showing that, you know, is a prodigy and he can fly and stand up on his broom, etc. And everybody else, they're having difficulties to float or like reach a certain height on their broom while they're just sitting on it and he's the only one standing around flying on his broom you know showing off a bit and so asta as we already know because they've already told us time and time again he has no magic power whatsoever but he can't even get off the ground and everybody's laughing at him and so after that they go through this montage of different exercises that use mana and we already know that asta can't use mana so to me this kind of this is kind of pointless because we already know they've beaten us over the head that he can't use any magic. So I didn't I didn't really understand the purpose of that. I guess it was more comedic than anything. Past that, they get to the 
combat portion of the exam, which is arguably to me the most important part, the most, I mean, the most exciting part to me as well. And that's just in my opinion, but that was the part that I enjoyed watching the most, even though it was very brief. The combat portion starts and this guy, Seke, who had been, I guess, not teaming up with Asta, but kind of being, I guess, friendly towards him to a degree and just letting him know that it's going to be all right. And, you know, just keep trying. You'll get the next test and different things like that. They get paired up and he, he makes it seem as if he's doing Asta a favor. And then right before the match starts, uh, he leans in and he tells Asta, and I'm going to paraphrase this a little bit, but he tells him that he's trash. He's from this backwater town. He has no business being there. He's going to join the Magic Knights. And this is Seke talking, saying he's going to join the Magic Knights and have an easy life because he's probably, I don't think he's a noble or he's not royalty, but he he's not, he's not an orphan. He's not from a weird town like Asta is. And so he gives him the scoop. He drops his, he, he drops his on him right before the match starts. And I don't know if this is his way of just getting in his head or what the deal was, but they also, and I, and I kind of noticed this about, the, the series as a whole is that it almost like every like 17 seconds they're always saying oh you're from Hodge you're from this this backwater town you're an orphan you're a commoner you're no good you're just you're Phil and I mean they kind of beat you over the head with this and so like every other side character says the same thing about where somebody's from or they're from this place or he's a noble like I understand that nobles and royalty have higher mana but at the same time, like it shouldn't really matter that much. But this that's the world that they built for us. And so I've almost gotten used to hearing that. It's I hear it so much that it kind of stands out to me. All of that happens. And then the match starts. And Oz is pissed because he's thinking this guy's been his friend this whole time. And he's really trying to screw him over. And so Seke has this, this magic that's all purpose. And it's both offense and defense. It keeps him protected, but lets him pretty much deploy projectiles from being with being inside his his construct and so uh the match starts Seke throws up his barrier and then Asta charges full speed and whips out his sword and we all know Asta's ability is to nullify magic and so he beats Seke in like three seconds and it was so satisfying to watch because you know you want him to do good and you know he doesn't have any magic but then what the turning point and I guess that's where I'm invested into it is that I initially thought this guy was going to be okay to some degree. But once he dropped, dropped that whole backwater commoner thing on Asta, I was like, all right, man, we got to do something about this. Asta beats him, no time flat. Everybody's amazed at what's happened because they think, oh, he failed all the tests, but he has incredible battle power. And it's not that he has magic. It's just that he's worked very hard to get here. He's, he's, he's done a lot of different things to make sure he's up to snuff. It can keep up with people who can use magic because as they like i said beat us over the head with he doesn't have any magic and so that's what the episode pretty much ends at is asta beating seke in one hit and I, like i said before it was very satisfying to watch and it was just that it was it was something that was needed because like i said the montage of failed attempts for the test that was there i felt like could have been used for something else they could have they could have actually had a couple tests and it showed more fights and that way it's kind of a balance because it was just it was not that it was boring to watch it was that i was okay with watching it but if something else would have been along that was better i probably would have wanted to see that instead and so that was probably my only only negative for this episode because as a whole I, I enjoyed it i enjoyed watching it just everything the the tidbit of information we got about the captains and how each captain is as strong as 100 soldiers and different things like that um we did get an institute of some mystery chick she shows up well actually the captain of the silver hawks or something like that he meets up with some chick and she's trying to fly on a broom and I don't think she's getting it quite tough, but then he tells her, oh, you're going to join my squad. And he just walks off. And uh, I'm not sure what's up with that, but they did go out of their way to show us that as well. I also had a thought because, again, I'm still thinking back on episode three where they they keep bringing up this this five leaf clover grimoire. Because when Asta beat Seke in no time flat, the, the head captain of, I guess, the best squad there. He notices his grimoire as well and so uh he calls it out oh you know he has a five clover grimoire they're, they're still alluding to it but from everything that i've seen i kind of have my own theory on what's going on aston you know are friends and rivals and they're orphaned together one's really good at magic 
other one's not good at magic but has a demon and so the only demon they've showed us so far is the one that's in the opening scene that they keep showing us and then they show that the original wizard king he had a four leaf grimoire just like you know does and so i'm thinking that that uh asta and you know are probably reincarnates of or or, or the demon and wizard king reincarnated respective and this is just their go at it again because they don't really show us anything like oh you know they were just sworn enemies anything like that like we don't know the backstory and how we got to the point in which they showed us right between them they just show a giant demon and this in this mage just show up and they're they're battling and you know we don't really know the full story and that's just my theory i don't have too much evidence on that but this isn't a theory video it was that's just my thoughts of what i've gathered so far but in between the first and fourth episode it's just i uh I got a feeling they're gonna do something with that if they, if they don't i really don't know but that's just kind of how i'm feeling because i haven't read the manga and i don't really intend to i just if i can if i can piece together enough evidence from watching the anime to give you guys a good theory video i definitely do that but um that's just my thoughts on it so far and like i said overall both three and four even though three didn't have a lot of stuff going on uh i enjoyed it i enjoyed the ride that it took me for and then I enjoyed 4 as well, especially with the brief but satisfying fight scene at the end. And so, like I said, thumbs up. I'm enjoying Black Clover series so far. It's Like I said, it's not too many negatives that I have, but I, I really enjoy it. And it's got me interested in it's done a few. It's done, it's done a thing that not a lot of anime have guided me to do. And has to be like somewhat invested, I guess, not on an emotional level, but to just be attached to a character to where like if he gets screwed over, I'm like, all right, man, we have to, we have to do something about this guy. And so, uh, like I said, good, good things for me. Hope you guys enjoy the series. Um, if you want me to do a theory video on, on my theory, give this video a thumbs up. Thank you guys for checking out the video, and I'll talk to y'all later.